Right, man, it's so good to be here, and uh, what a cool venue. I pulled up, and I was like, this is awesome. We, when we started our church, uh, we had a, a mobile setup similar to this, and, and I was talking to some of the volunteers earlier, and uh, man, it's just so awesome to see everyone rally around a cause, a mission, and this is incredible what you have, and um, I want to say thank you to Pastor John, his wife, and family. We went out and had dinner last night, and we were like, yeah, I think we may go see Top Gun, you know, whatever. And they bought us tickets, you know. And uh, we went and had a blast. I got my two boys right here. Two, uh, two, uh, y'all come on up here. And no, I'm just kidding. They don't want to do that. <laughs> and we made this a bro trip, you know, four and a half hours uh, drive. And we just made it a bro trip. And we've had a blast so far. And uh, I'm excited to share the word with you. And, um, but I just think what you guys have going on here is, is truly incredible. And uh, I know that, uh, that God sees what you're doing. I was talking to some of the volunteers earlier about how God is always working in your good works. And um, there's more to life than just living. There's more to life than just going through the motions. That's kind of what I want to talk to you about here in a minute, uh, about legacy. And uh, I just think it's really cool. And uh, why don't you just give, give, give God some praise for this church and your pastors. Would you just make some noise? I have a picture of the rest of my family, just so you can, like, maybe know me for a second. You know, uh, this is my beautiful wife, Ashley. We've been married 17 years. She's been very much involved in everything uh, we've been doing in ministry. So uh, that's been really cool. We, we were at a church uh, for 18 years called New Life Church. We just recently resigned about six months ago, and we, le- we left that church that we love. I'm still kind of involved. I'm still going to do some teaching for them, but we, we are in a season of figuring out what are we going to do next? Are we going to start our own church? Are we going to, are we going to move? Are we going to, what are we going to do? And now I'm working uh, with One Hope right now, as Pastor John mentioned, but we're, we're in a season of transition, and it's been interesting. And, but we're, we've always been in it together, you know, and it, it's been awesome. So these are four. This Mac on the, on the right, uh, he's 13. Pierce is 10, and uh, they're here with me. And then Eve right here, she's our daughter, and uh, our only daughter, she kind of runs the house a little bit. And then Knox, uh, so when we had three kids, they all were like, we really need a puppy, we really need a dog, we really need a pet. I'm like, I would rather have another kid than have a dog. (laughs) So that's where Knox came from, (laughs) is from those conversations. And um, he's awesome. I remember, like, when I didn't have kids, and I would see parents, like, at the park or whatever, and they had, like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this, like, the leash, the kids on a leash thing, and I would judge them so hard. I'd be like, just teach them how to be obedient. My goodness. And then I had kids. And I was like, you know where I can get one of those kids on a leash things, you know? Just yank them back or whatever. Uh, so I'm a family guy. I, Father, happy Father's Day to all the dad. I mean, this, it's, it's an amazing honor to be a dad. And um, I will say the lowest point in my life was when I took our minivan to get the windows tinted. <laughs> that was the biggest dad, dad moment for me. I was like, black it out, you know. So in 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, I want to read this scripture, and we're just going to kind of go through uh, a few no, I don't know if you're a note taker. You could take some notes on your phone or whatever. I just want to just want to speak for a moment about legacy, spiritual legacy. In Second Timothy, chapter four. Now, now Paul wrote the Apostle Paul wrote this epistle. He wrote this letter to a young man named Timothy. So a lot of the a lot of the books of the Bible will be you know written to a certain church or whatever. This was written to a certain person. It was Paul writing to a young man. And it was right before Paul was going to die. So he wrote two letters. That's why you have 1 Timothy and then 2 Timothy. And Paul was his mentor. He was his father figure. And uh, most scholars say that this, this letter, this epistle, was one of the prison letters that was written from a dark prison cell in Rome. And this is actually the last letter that Paul wrote. And it's right before he's about to die. And here, here's, let's just read it and then we'll refer back to it. He says, as for me, and remember he's talking to his, 
his, this young man named Timothy before he died. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. And when he says my life, he said my, my entire life. Like, not my Sunday. No, but seven days a week, right? Not just a little bit of my life. My entire life. Not, not, not just, oh yeah, my, this over here and then I'm a different. No, my entire being. My finances. My career. My personality. My gifts. My, my interest, everything has been poured out. My life has been poured out as an offering to God. And he says, the time of my death is near. In verse 7, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And Paul left a spiritual legacy in fact, some of you have read the Bible for a while. Maybe you grew up in church. You know a little bit about Paul. Some of you are like, I don't even know who you're talking about. But Paul, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He planted and started many, 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 many churches. He is a legend in the faith. And when he wrote these letters, he didn't know that we would be reading about him thousands of years later. He was just doing the will of God. He was just being faithful. He was just saying yes. You know, he didn't know he would be a legend. He didn't know he would be a hero of the faith. He didn't know that he would be the, one of the most well-known, most quoted people in the Bible. But his legacy, thousands of years later, we're still reading about him and talking about the impact that he has made. His spiritual legacy has outlasted and outlived him. When we were, my, my wife and I, we were like college pastors when we were very young. We did a lot of things that we, like, we wouldn't do again. Like in ministry, like we would get canceled for sure. Like, like just things that, you know, you, you do anything to reach the youth. You know what I mean? Like just things that we do. One of them, it's not that bad, but like when we had new leaders come on our team, they were college age leaders. And we did this sort of, a, it's, it's probably not the right word, but kind of an initiation, right? Um, and we would, just, just go with me here for a second. We would blindfold them and put them into the church van. And we would drive them around the city and like the first stop was like at the university and we would like you know everyone get out you know watch your step you know <laughs> you take your blindfolds off this is your mission field you know what I mean and we were like and then like this is your call to reach you know like, put your blindfold back on let's go to the next stop you know and then we would go to like uh, overlook over the city and like take your blindfold off these are all the souls in your city. This, we need to be like Jesus, you know, and reach them, whatever. Put your blindfold back on. And then the last thought, we would take them to a cemetery. <laughs> like, watch your step. Take your blindfold off. This is creepy, right? <laughs> you know, like, but we would have them go around and look at tombstones <laughs> and, and, and look at the dash you know, because on a tombstone you have the, the year that the person, the day that the person was born and the, and the year of the day that the person passed away. And we talked about the dash. What do you do in the dash? That's where we're all at. You know, we're, we're living in the dash. And, and we actually, like, no one can, like, force us to do anything great or be anything or live God's purposes, like, we have, like, personal choices of what we're going to do from the time we're born until the day God calls us home. We have a choice to make, right? What are we going to do with the dad? What are people going to say about you? What, like, what, what's your legacy going to be? He was a good dude. She was a great woman. Like, they did well for themselves. They were cool. They had a cute family. They loved sports. They were diehard, you know, Razorback fan or whatever. Like, what's, the, what's, what's your spiritual legacy going to be? Like, not just the superficial things. What about your life will, like, outlive you? There's a quote by Dr. Billy Graham. He said this. Live your life with the end in mind because the end is going to come. Live your life 
with the end in mind because the end is going to come. If we could just for a second today on this Father's Day, zoom out and then zoom back in. If we can just see our life from a bird's eye view, the big picture. What has God called us to do? We know a lot about what, what God has called us to do just by reading his word. So we don't have to wonder about God's will. God's will is to walk in his ways. You can do it in Wichita. You can do it anywhere you go. Everywhere I go, I'm going to walk in God's ways, right? But what, what is going to be my spiritual legacy? Now, legacy is defined in the dictionary as an amount of money or like property, right? It's left to someone in a will. That's the, that's the typical definition of legacy. But it's more than a piece of property. It's more than a sum of money. It's more than, you know, what you leave a family business or grandma's quilt or whatever. It's, it's, it's a spiritual legacy, the stuff that money cannot buy. Here's my definition of a spiritual legacy if you're taking notes. A spiritual legacy is what we leave when we leave. It's what we leave when we leave. And a lesson to be learned as you read through the Bible is that the passing of the spiritual baton, as you see in Scripture, it's seen in Moses passing the baton to Joshua, David to Solomon, Elijah to Elisha, Jesus to his disciples, Paul to Timothy, as we just read. So here's just a few things about spiritual legacy uh, that we need to understand. Uh, it's not monetary. It's not monetary. It's good to leave a financial inheritance, right? It's great. In fact, it says in Proverbs 13, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. I, I'm all about it, right? Make a bunch of money. Leave it to your kids. Do it. But it's, it's even better to leave a spiritual inheritance. On this Father's Day, I think about all the dads in the room. Make that money. But what do your kids need more than money? Eternity in heaven. A life well lived. The promises of God. The values of Scripture. God's heart for people, right? It's more than monetary. Our spiritual legacy, it's also, it's not temporary. It's, it's not temporary. So it's not just what we did or how awesome we are or what we accomplished. Because what we do for ourselves, it dies with us. But what we do for others, you know, it lives beyond us. And our spiritual legacy is all for the glory of God. It's all for God's people. Psalm 102 verse 18 says, let this be written for a future generation. So this is not just for me, it's just for the people that come after me, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. Psalm 145 verse 4, let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. So it's not, it's not temporary. Our, also, our spiritual legacy is not voluntary. You actually can't just be like, you know what, I guess I'll just pass on that. I'm going to say no to a legacy. You don't get to, we, we don't get to choose that. You're, you're here, you're alive, and you will leave some sort of legacy. You will leave a legacy when you pass away. You will leave a legacy at your school. You will leave a legacy at your workplace. You will leave a legacy in your family, your extended family. You will leave a legacy everywhere you go. Now, you, we, can, we get to decide what that is. But if you don't do anything, by default, you will leave some sort of legacy. It could be this. It could be like, he was really negative, like all the time. She worried a lot. Uh, he was an abuser, a narcissist. She was a manipulator. She, she never uh, lived up to her potential. Or it could be like, he was such an encourager. He spoke the word of God over me. He spoke life into me. She uh, was caring and compassionate and hospitable. and I felt Jesus when I was around her, right? They were so life-giving. They, the they were the only group, they were the only family at the baseball games that, that brought life to the environment. At school, 
he was the only person that I looked up to because I knew he did the right thing when no one was looking. So we get to decide what our legacy is going to be, but it's not voluntary. You don't opt in or opt out. It's here. We get to decide, right? Psalm 112, verse 6. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. And our spiritual legacies are what we leave when we leave. They're, they're not left by accident. You don't fall into it. You don't be like, whoops, I guess I, must, I, guess I did okay. No. You don't, you don't migrate to it, right? This life of faith, this sacrificial life. You don't, you, there's not like a gravitational pull to becoming more selfless and more sacrificial. No, no, no. It takes intentionality and faith and discipline. Nothing that we care about is done by accident. It's always intentional. It's never an afterthought. So if we want to leave this spiritual legacy, no matter what age you are today, it's going to be because we make a decision by faith, by the grace of God, that we're going to be intentional we're going to do things differently. You want to make a difference? Well, you have to be different. You know what I mean? And so I want to read you the scripture in Ephesians 4. Then I want to go through how, how do we build a spiritual legacy? Ephesians 4, this is also Paul. He's talking to the church in Ephesus. He says this. Therefore, a prisoner, I, a prisoner serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. He's begging the people of Ephesus. I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. And I want to do the same thing to you today. I want to beg you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have in your life. You got one shot at it. You owe it to the people that love you. You owe it to the people that God has surrounded you with. And most of all, most importantly, there's, there's not even a close second. You owe it to Jesus who laid his life down for you. And where do we get the strength to do what we're supposed to do, what we're called to do? The strength comes from remem remembering what Jesus has done for us. We get the supernatural power from responding to what Jesus has done for us and the Holy Spirit. We can do this through him. We have one shot. In the book of James, it says that life is a vapor. Other translation says it's a mist. Or it's like a morning fog. It's here and then it's gone. Life is consistently passing us by. It's moving swiftly. We, it's easy to say, well, yeah, when I get out of college, I'll, I'll, I'll live for God. All right? All right, when, when the kids, you know, when we get settled, we get in that house, when, uh, when we get ourselves right financially, when my job starts getting less stressful, uh, when, 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 when things settle down, COVID's still here, sort of, we get, no. There's always going to be an excuse. Time is limited. Earth is temporary. Life is short. Eternity is long, and we have to live like it. This is the time, right? This is the time for some of you to make that step that, yeah, maybe you love Jesus, you believe in Jesus, but you're coasting. You're numb. You're living a status quo life. You're not alive, right? You're looking around at everyone else when it's really God's calling you, right? You're calling you to be what you never had, right? Calling you to be different when everyone else is the same. You're looking for a spark. You're looking for someone to come alive, and it's like God's tapping you on the shoulder. I want you to come alive. I want you to lead my people. I want you to invest. I want you to serve. I want you to sacrifice. I want you to love. I want you to forgive. I want you to model and be an example. I want, I, it's you, right? This is the story in Scripture that we see. He's always just calling imperfect people that are willing to make a difference. God, for whatever reason, does not just snap his God fingers and go, everyone's healed and saved and whole and whatever. No, he uses broken people like me and like you. So 
I just want to give you three ways we can do this. I'm sure there's more than three, but I'm a preacher, so I'm going to give you three points. So jot these down. If you're taking notes on your phone, um, the Bible says that 55% of people that take notes in church go to heaven. So if you read Leviticus, you'll find that in there. Um, how, how do we build a spiritual legacy? Number one, be intentional about how you live. Be intentional about how you live. Paul said, my life has already been poured out. My life has already been poured out. Be intentional about how you live, and it will outlive you. In the end, it's not going to be what you said. It's not going to be what you knew. It's not going to be any of that. It's, it's going to be how you lived. It's easy to talk the talk. It's hard to, to walk the walk. Let's go to another scripture. This is actually in his first letter to Timothy in 4.16. He says, keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Be intentional about how you live. My dad um, used to manage grocery stores. He was, he was over grocery stores, he made a good living. But one day, he, he loved to fish. One day, he was on his bass boat in the middle of a lake, and God spoke to him to become a preacher. He was, you know, 29 years old, had a career. There was, he had three kids. I was six years old at the time. And God spoke to him to become a preacher, and he sold our house. He sold his bass boat and moved a few hours away to go to seminary. And he went to seminary during the day, and at night, he worked at a grocery store, but he wasn't the manager. He was stocking shelves through the night. And we had this little bitty house with this little bitty closet that he made his office where he would study. And so he would, he would go to seminary during the day, during the week. At night, he would stock shelves. And then on the weekend, we would travel all these small country towns, and he would preach. That was our life. And now... To this day, right now, he is the president of that seminary. He's in Christian education. He's doing amazing things. During that time where there was so much sacrifice, my, my mom, she to, to make ends meet, to help, she ran a daycare out of our home. So I get home from school, and there'd be snotty, weird kids everywhere. I'm like, what? But I see, I look back on the sacrifice. I see how God has blessed the faithfulness, the legacy. I'm reminded of that often when I... Just to go through even the season we're in right now, you know. Step, we're stepping out on faith, you know. God always honors it. God, God always blesses it, right? Be intentional about how you live. Have integrity, character. Be real and honest. Treat people with respect and honor. Have humility. Forgive people. It's not just about what you do. It's who you are. Be intentional about how you live. Number two, be intentional about where you give about where, where you give. Paul said, I've been fighting the good fight of faith. One time I thought I was about to get in a fight in Walmart, which, you know, that's not that uncommon, really. Uh, but I had just preached uh, at our church, New Life Church, back in Conway, Arkansas. I had just preached, and I was running to Walmart. We needed diapers or something. I would preached five times that weekend. And I, I, I get up to the, the checkout, and there is this dude in front of me that is massive, like bodybuilder. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to stare. But, you know, like, you're, I'm just thinking, man, he's, he's a big dude, you know. And I'm a, I'm a big guy. I, I grew up, I was big as a baby. Like, I was like over 10, I was a 10-pounder. Like, my mom said I was big bones. So, um, so I don't worry that much about, you know, big guys. But this dude was like, like wrestler, like WWE, whatever. And I kid you not, I'm holding these diapers or whatever, and he turns at me. He goes, hey, I'm going to punch you in the face. I said, I didn't hear the first part. Um, I said, excuse me? He said, I could not, I could not understand what he was saying. 
I'm going to punch you in the face. And I'm like, do I ask him again? Because I don't understand, you know. I said, I, I, I don't understand. I just came to get diapers. He goes, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, I'm going to punch you in the face. I said, listen here, man. I may look smaller than you, but I can, I can show up when I need to. Um, no, I didn't say that. Um, I said, sir, I don't know what you're saying. And he came closer. He said, you better always preach that good or I'm going to punch you in the face. And I go, oh, good. You know, whatever. I guess he was at the service or whatever. I thought I was about to get in a fight. Like, I don't know what I would do, you know, like run, you know. Paul relates his life, the ways that he led his life, he, as he's referring back to it. He, this is what he, he doesn't say, it was a cute little run, you know. Like, he doesn't say, it was a life of comfort. It was lit, you know. He says, no, nah, it was a fight. Is that how your life feels every now and then? Here's the lie that sometimes, and even like pastors or preachers are like, you give your life to God, he's going to bless you, you're never going to have a bad day. No, we don't say that, right? No one, really, no one really says that. But even if we, I say we, but like even in church sometimes, we're like, give your heart to God and everything's going to fall together. It's just not true. Now, in eternity it falls together. Our hope is in heaven. Our hope is not, we're on earth. Broken people, stupid people, Messed up people, brokenness everywhere, right? So if you're like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live my life for Jesus and then things get worse, you're not alone. It's a fight. You're like, I'm gonna lead my kids, that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead my kids. I'm gonna lead my wife. I'm gonna be nice to my husband. I'm gonna, whatever. I'm gonna lead this devotional at work, you know, whatever. And it's like, the warfare starts happening. Yeah, it's a fight. The devil hates you, it's a fight. This is not some cute little thing, right? Life and legacy, it's a fight. Psalm 78, I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known. Stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his wonders. I want to ask you, what, where do you give your life? Like, what are you fighting for? If, you know what I mean? We have to decide, where am I willing to give? What, what am I going to give? Here's a few questions to just, maybe you can look through them this week as you think about your life. Where do you give your time? Where do you give your time? Psalm 90, verse 12, Moses, he wrote this psalm. He says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. Now, we number our days in certain areas. If you are about to get, you know, married, you know, the bride numbers the days. We have 21 days. So the, the groom is more like, you know, the honeymoon is what they're counting down to. But they're, they're, we number our days. We count down to fall. So we're like, oh, I can't wait till fall, football, pumpkin spice, uh, you know, whatever, you know. Christmas, some of you are like already thinking about Christmas and we're praying for you. It, you got problems, you know what I mean? Like we count down the days to certain things. The psalm, this psalm teaches us that our lives, our days are numbered. And sometimes we spend, including me, I spend my life sometimes like our days aren't numbered, like we're going to live forever. And it's just not true. We fail to live in the moment. We fail to make the most. We fail to do God's will. We fail to make memories. We, we fail to speak up. And time, it's, it's like money in that you get to spend it. You get to invest it. But the difference is you can't save it, and you can't make more of it. If you don't use it, you lose it. Where are you giving your time? Also, where do you give your energy? Here, here's, I just wrote down some things that maybe I've struggled with in the past, or maybe you would struggle with. Where are you wasting your energy? Uh, trying to please everyone. Thinking about all the what ifs. Being bitter at someone. Trying to change people. That'll suck the life right out of you. You can't change people. Comparing yourself to other people. Beating yourself up about your past. See, all these things require energy. Where are you giving your energy? We all have the same amount of time, right? We do not all have the same amount of energy. Where do you give your energy? Stop doing the things that do not matter. 
right? And then where do you give your money? Where do you give your money? Because your money follows your heart. Your money exposes what you value. That's what money does. So many people have climbed the ladder of success making money, and, but only to realize that that ladder was leaning on the wrong wall. And some people think that it's too late. You know what I mean? And it's never too late, but it's easy to think about all the wasted years. But today we want to look towards the future because we can't change the past. We can only look forward. Some people realize at the end of their life or that they have money and success, but they, don't, they have no investment into eternity, like no values, no connection with their kids. You know, their marriage is falling apart or they didn't. No friends to share the success with. No real friends. They're just a shell of themselves, right? So where do we give, where do we give our, our time, our energy, our money? And then number three, another way that we can build a spiritual legacy is to be intentional about who we influence. Who you influence. We all, we all have a realm of influence. I'll never forget when we were a young church, our church we started in Fayetteville, like we had this sweet couple that was, um, I mean, they're very involved in our church. Um, the, the woman was leading our kids ministry and, and this, he, she started dating this guy. They were great. And everybody was like, they're going to get married, you know? And they were, they were kind of like, yeah, I think we're going to get married, you know, like whatever. And it just almost, they're like that couple that's like, you probably kind of think they're already married, but they're not. It just feels right. It's like, they're married, but they're not married. Well, one day, uh, right before, uh, it was like Saturday night, right before Sunday, my wife's like, oh, Rusty and Dana got married, got engaged. I was like, oh, that's great. That makes sense. I'm so happy for them. And then she goes, oh, wait, no, they didn't. Well, I didn't hear that part. I didn't hear that part. So, so the next day, they're walking up into church, and I leaned over to our volunteers. I'm like, hey, this is a great couple in our church. They're, they just got engaged last night. When they walk through these doors, we're going to go crazy. We are going to celebrate them. They are faithful. They, they have been so faithful to our church. They are the sweetest couple in the world. So they come in. We're like, yay. I started, I started doing things I've never done before. I don't know what got into me. Too much coffee? I don't know. And they're like, hi, you know, because they didn't get engaged. They never got engaged. I mean, they're engaged. They're married now. But like, I was going crazy. I influenced people to do something weird, right? <laughs> Influence is a powerful thing. Who are we going to influence? God has chosen us. Paul said, he said, I have finished the race. I've remained faithful. See, some people start well, but they don't finish well. This is a man who experienced persecution. He was abandoned by his friends, shipwrecked, beaten up, whipped, arrested, spent time in a dungeon, prison cell. Yet he remained faithful. He finished the race. Just by finishing, that's a great legacy. Matthew 28 is a great commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We call this the Great Commission. The prefix co means with. So cooperate, that word cooperate means operate with someone to to do something with someone coexist means to exist with someone right commission means to be on mission with someone the great commission i'm going to be on mission but i'm not going to do it alone i'm going to invest in people who are you bringing with you who are you intentionally going after there's a chinese proverb that says this it says if your vision is for a year plant wheat if your vision is for 10 years plant trees if your vision is for a lifetime, plant people. And Paul said, he said, my life has already been poured out like a drink offering. It's an offering to God. And this refers to the Old Testament practice of pouring a drink offering out in worship in Numbers 15. You can read about it. And after a priest would sacrifice a lamb or ram or bull, uh, he would pour wine beside the altar to symbolize the dedication of a person in worship to God. And 
Paul had poured out his life as an act of worship. And I want us all to do the same. This drink offering is a metaphor for the blood of Jesus spilled on the cross. And Jesus spoke to this directly in Luke 22 when he instituted the new covenant. He picked up a cup of wine. He said, this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So Jesus' sacrifice fulfilled the need of a drink offering. And now, because his blood was literally poured out when the soldier pierced his side, So now, how do we leave an offering? It's our life. Our life is our offering. We give our life. And Jesus left the most important legacy, a sinless life, a sacrificial life. He literally gave up his life. He left us with salvation. He left us with resurrection power. He left us with his word. He left us with the Holy Spirit, the greatest legacy ever. Would you bow your heads? I just want to pray over you. God, we thank you for everyone in the room. We know how much that that you love each person and that you see each person. You see each soul, the value of every single person in this room, no matter the things that they've went through here on on earth so far, the the wounds, the the trials, the suffering, the, the people that have hurt them, the weird seasons they've had in their life, it doesn't matter. You see them, you love them. God, today, I know that we have an opportunity. And God, I just pray for every person here. God, that they would live their life here with the end in mind. That they would build a spiritual legacy by serving people and seeing people the way that you see them. So we just pray over each person, each teenager, kids in the kids ministry, every college student, every young adult, every single person, every married couple, every family, every empty nester, every person in this room, we pray that we would build a spiritual legacy. Speak to us this week, God, about how that we can do that better. Things, the practical things that we can change, things that we can do in order to fulfill this. Help us to not be normal. Help us to do everything that you've called us to do. In Jesus' name.